Hello guys, here the promised little update, as you could see in the photos. I was replaced at a wooden furniture cart with some proper alumino, aluminum frame, aluminum, one of those um, frames basically, and it's open bottom, so better air circulation. Um, there were some questions about uh, in the last video when I ran it why I didn't reach sub-zero temperatures. The reason is that the system was designed for maximum power, not uh, maximum low temperature. Uh, basically, if the temperature of the uh, propellant glycol gets too low, um, basically we have a floodback to the compressor because the capillary is overfeeding the evaporator. The evaporator is inside of the tank. Uh, as you can see, there is a capillary. There is no thermal expansion valve. Well, that would be an upgrade. Um, it would, of course, control the flow of the refrigerant better. Um, also, give more efficiency and so on. Uh, but that's for a future uh, future project to upgrade to that one. For now, we just use a capillary. Um, again, it was designed to have maximum power, about one kilowatt of cooling capacity because it will be used for cooling, for example, semiconductors or uh, induction coil for induction heaters. Uh, so you don't really need a super low temperature, you rather need a lot of, uh, capable of a lot of uh, power to dissipate, basically, to get rid of a lot of heat. Um, yeah, the mixture is, as mentioned, two parts water and one part of propylene glycol that is up to minus 14 but the glycol was added mostly for corrosion protection since it has additives to protect the evaporator from corroding uh, yeah, otherwise you could just use deionized de water this is mixed with deionized water and I think another question was the refrigerant is R290 uh, it is a R290 compressor, so everything is, is designed to operate with R290. Flammable refrigerant, of course. And let's turn it on now and let it run for a little bit. Once you start it, there is an on delay, one minute, that lets the glycol basically pre circulate. If there's any air in the hoses, if it would be if you would for example connect it to something and then there's air in the system so you first let the air bleed out um, then about one minute later the compressor will start the cooling cycle uh, I will now show the set temperatures but first let, let it start actually and it takes about one one minute or so any time now and oh well, sorry you have to wait <laughs> yeah, there we go now it started the refrigeration cycle uh, the contactor pulled in and started let me show the, the current temperature is 25.2 the upper limit is 15, the lower limit is now set now set to 10 degrees C. But as I was saying in one of the comments, you can adjust the temperature controller to whatever temperature you desire. Uh, basically, there is a thermistor inside of the tank. This wire goes to the thermistor and this measures the temperature of the glycol. Otherwise, there is a pressure, high pressure safety switch in case the pressure gets too high, for example, if you are not uh, by the unit and, for example, the fan starts blocks or something, locks up the motor and that would, of course, in very high pressure, so you need to have a pressure uh, safety. The compressor has a thermal protection and also that motor protector is set to about 4 amps, so that's also a uh, protection.
Now the temperature slowly starts to drop. Of course, first it's slower because the system needs to get up to like temperature, like the refrigerant has to start to properly flow through the circle circuit. This usually takes a few minutes. Then the temperature starts to fall faster or quicker. I may fast forward from this point. We are just about to satisfy. And we satisfied. As you could see, we have small amounts of flood back uh, to the compressor, but that's okay. Um, yeah. Now, once the temperature would reach 15 C again, it would restart the cycle and it would repeat endlessly, basically. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and see you soon again. Bye!